Boomtown Dubai, a development supernova. Imagine several hundred skyscrapers being constructed simultaneously in a development that will instantly create a city. Now imagine 10 of these developments. Now add a new one announced just about every month. It's hard to believe that in 1971, Dubai wasn't much more than desert. Seduced by employment opportunities and tax-free living, most live here for one reason, to make money. Travel riders cover different beats. I tackle the quirky cultural side of travel. I find edgy, risk-taking stories. The trick is to find stories that inspire. And the stories that sell. Julia was convinced we were going to stay in a hostel, but it's a four-star hotel. Beautiful. Oh my god, do you see the pool? Oh. Whoa. <laughs> to soak up the soak up the newness. This is what happens to you when you spend too long in a backpacker hostel. When you go to a, like a nice four-star hotel, you freak out. Whoa. Oh. Oh yes. And look, a great workspace. Ah, the symbol of Dubai, the construction crane. I'm sure it'll be great at 6 a.m. when the workers start banging away. With a population of over a million, only 20% are local-born Emiratis. The rest include expats and migrant laborers, and for them, life isn't all luxury. I don't always come to a location with a story in mind. And when that's the case, it's best to start the hunt by getting a sense of the city. Have you ever done one of these bus tours before? In London, I think, you know, it's kind of different. I mean, London's made for the bus tours. Dubai, in the heat. I actually like these bus tours sometimes because you hop on the bus and it takes you everywhere you want to go. But it's so touristy, like, oh. Do you write about it? Do you make this an article? It's more for me to gain a survey of where everything is yeah. and kind of get a sense of where I am in the city. After the National Bank of Dubai, that would be the Dubai Chamber of Commerce. Is that where we have a group? Yes, that is where we would. Much has been written about the explosion of Dubai, with billions of dollars converting a desert emirate into a major global financial and tourism center. Driving on the highway, I stare out the window at jaw-dropping construction, cranes surrounding buildings like giant mosquitoes sucking cement blood. 20% of the world's cranes, hundreds, thousands, an infestation of metal. Anything you ever see on Dubai is like the biggest hotel, you know, every, all, all the stuff they're building. So I kind of feel like writing about it has already been done a million times before. But it hasn't been done by you, <laughs> Julia Diamond. Yeah in Dubai. Right. But Boomtown Dubai is not an experience of story. That's why I'm having a hard time figuring out how I'm going to write this. What am I going to write? Okay, well we've seen a bit of Boomtown Dubai, lots of hotels, a lot of construction. Kind of cool, huh? I'm gonna go inside a mall. Fancy that, another mall. You know how many malls there are in this? A, a whole lot of malls. You'll be stunned. There's like some staggering figure of malls and they're building more malls. Dubai is a shopper's paradise. Tourists flock from all over the world for a little tax-free retail therapy. What is this place called? Mall of Emirates? Mall of Emirates. There's, what, 47 malls in Dubai? So it's hard to keep them all straight. The mall skyline has a large, curious silver ramp. Inside is Ski Dubai, holding 6,000 tons of snow and offering skiers a 400-meter run down an 18-meter wide slope. 
standing inside an air-conditioned mall built in the middle of a desert, staring at people swooshing down ski slopes. An idea for an article starts to bubble. There's too much. There's too much. There's too much. Big. They say this is just the beginning. This is the beginning. Hi. How can I help you, sir? I'm a travel writer and I'm doing a story about Dubai for several major newspapers. Okay. Um, one of the things that I thought would be really interesting to uh, my readers would be the idea of hiring uh, a sports car. Okay. When in Dubai. So um, the managing director of the company is away for a month. Here we have it, people. The glamorous behind the scenes life of a travel writer. I've got a PR contact at Ski Dubai, one of the world's biggest indoor ski ramps. Everything will be fine. And you guys have all the gear and everything? Okay, so I think we, we were looking at being there at 5 o'clock, is that right? Yeah. I've got myself a story. Sandboarding in the morning, <laughs> snowboarding in the afternoon. It's going to be good. It's going to be really good. With my story good to go, I have time to do some more exploring. We passed that marina with 200 sky rises. I, I, and they're building the world's tallest building. The first time I heard about the, the palm, I thought it was a joke. They're building this massive palm tree island into the sea that you can see from space. Who does that? That's crazy. <laughs> Dubai does that. Check out this model. So they're going to double the coastline of Dubai just with this development. It's amazing. Yeah, most of the villas are built, which I'm looking forward to checking out. They have your own private beach. Like to, to dredge the bottom of the ocean and to build this, that's They're incredible. They're building three of them. The three Palm Islands will have more malls alone than currently exist in all of Dubai and increase Dubai's coastline by a thousand kilometers. Hotels, skyscrapers, thousands of villas. Like, who's buying these things? That's the big question. I just don't understand. They're building so much, but is it ever going to get used? Yeah. Are people buying this they stuff saw, up? It's sold out. Yeah, I want to see it with my own eyes. The model's good, but I, I really want to see what it looks like. It's a good story, but it's already been told. I'm looking for something cultural to dive into. So we make plans to tour the development once I make my deadline. OK, let's go. <laughs> Finding something interesting to write about isn't always easy. In a place like Dubai, culture seems to take a back seat to opulent shopping malls and five-star hotels. I'm looking for a story with teeth about real life in Dubai, but I can't find it. So um, I actually came up with the idea of doing falconry, and that's a traditional sort of cultural Arabic practice where they've trained these amazing falcons to, you know, fly and circle around. So I just wanted to... Travel writing is a bit like detective work. I, just call you... I okay. research, follow leads, and gather evidence until I finally uncover a story. Hello? Hello, Sally? Hi, this is Julia Diamond calling. We discuss meeting up for a falcon show, a tour of a falcon hospital, and a falcon hatchery. It all sounds great until he tells me the price. My great story is about to fizzle. Wow, okay. Okay, well, I like to cover stories that I think the average traveler can actually afford. And I don't think many travelers would be willing to pay 500 US dollars to see a falcon show. So that's not gonna work for me. It's the weekend, so I'm feeling a little bit stressed out. So plan B, I found another woman whose name is Nicola, and she also has a Falcon program. And now I'm just waiting for her to call. We drive 40 minutes out of Dubai's heavy traffic towards the stunning desert known as Big Red. It's just past 8.30 a.m. and according to the air-conditioned Land Cruiser, the outside temperature is already 36 degrees. Dune bashing. This is when you bash dunes. 
It's like roller coaster. Inspired by the massive snow dome I saw at the mall, I've set myself a unique challenge which should make for an interesting article. Where else in the world can you sandboard massive desert dunes in the morning and snowboard indoors in the afternoon? Please take some time to say goodbye. Promise you so I've got myself a sandboard. It's 8.30 in the morning. It's way over 30 degrees. It's a big dune in the big red desert. Holy shit. The pictures are going to be amazing. This is steep. There's no doubt about the fact that this is scary. Um, all right, this is exactly the kind of story that my freelance editors look for from me. Um, something a little different, adventurous. The combination with the sand and the snow is unusual. Uh, Julie's out looking for a story. Um, she's more than happy to leave this kind of stuff up to me. Turn! Here we go! Hit a top speed of about 0.5 k's a second. And a separate lead gun closed eyes Reacting this and open wide Southport Let's try that again. This time with some enthusiasm. Southport's right with road out cover Static arcs and maps and sounds Script is all in pencil now So take me Ooh. jumpers through this yeah. You made it! Sandboarding is one of those things that looks much better on photographs, on camera, than it does when you actually do it. Because you don't go very fast, it's a lot of effort, and it's very hot. Go, Seabiscuit! <laughs> Looking forward to going snowboarding. Sand, it's not for me. So a travel writing actually involves quite a bit of organizing and hustling. You have to call in advance, you have to explain what you're doing, um, you have to do you know, a lot of research before you actually get to do the fun stuff. But I'm not having fun right now. I'm stressed out, I'm worried that I'm not going to get my story, nobody's calling me back. This falconry story I thought was going to be a little bit more cut and dry and it's now turned out to be a lot more work than I thought it would be. Um, this is the part that most people don't see uh, when it comes to travel writing, um, the stress behind it. Because um, at the end of the day, if I leave Dubai without a story, I'm in trouble. Since I have a weekly column, I can't just say, oh, sorry, I couldn't find anything to write about this week. I have to file a story, or else. It's busy. It's been busy for the past two hours. Here I am on my way to go snowboarding in the desert at the mall. It's nuts. Snowboarding! Shoe size and socks. I hope this is going to be a lot more fun than the sandboarding. Earlier today, it was 40 degrees. It's going to be minus four in there. That's a 44 degree variance in one day. Oh, that's so refreshing. The air in here is doing wonders for my throat. My throat was just completely wasted, and it was because of all the sand and the dust. This is the only indoor chair in the world that actually turns. 
They even painted the ceiling blue. It's like a blue sky day. Blue sky! Blue sky! <laughs> yeah, it's like the Truman Show. Ready? Just as I was starting to get going, it ends. 25 stories in seconds. If I do 10 of these, I might get one real run in. It's fun though. I'm pretty sure that this has been covered to death. Sandboarding has been covered in the desert so far. Mixing the two of them together, I hope I'm the first one to think of it. Let's do it. It's the first time I'm going to write about it, and that must count for something. I originally intended to do a story about falconry. All right, see you tomorrow. But the falcon story Bye. fell through, so my backup story is fencing. Great, I finally have a story. I've had a really hard time finding a story here in Dubai, but a private lesson from a fencing master is a winner. It's a good story because I get to learn from an Arabic fencing champion. I slip the black and white helmet over my face. Wearing the claustrophobic mask, I feel like Hannibal Lecter. I picture myself in medieval times, fighting for the honor of my kingsmen. I engage in a heated imaginary battle. I joust and dodge. Though my imaginary partner is skilled, I'm better. It's complicated. He led you the clock is ticking, and my Arabic fencing master has yet to arrive. Don't let I wait and wait, wait and wait some more. He's an hour behind schedule. Nope, it's busy. If he's not here to teach me, I can't write about it. So I've been waiting three and a half hours and the fencing master is still not here. So it looks like I won't learn how to fence after all. This sometimes happens to travel writers, you know, their stories just don't pan out. So I still don't have a story. So don't let it break you. Don't let it break you. Robin? So I really want to tell you how my day went. Yeah, fencing. So I get there, he doesn't show. Oh no. Yeah. No. I have been really struggling to find something cool and unique to write about. I mean, everything here is either about shopping or looking at five-star hotels. So while you were chasing a story, I contacted the local newspaper and got through to someone and sent through some stories, and they, they bought all, all three of them. So I would love to be supportive, and I'm happy for you. <laughs> but deep down, I'm irritated because I spent the entire day looking for a story, and meanwhile, you, were, you had the time to pitch, which is what I should have been doing. Help. We could definitely do the malls. <laughs> Hi, can I speak to someone in your media department, please? Okay. My name is Julia Diamond. Thank you for your time. All right, but to the mall, here I come. Last night I was pretty stressed out that I wouldn't be able to find a story at all. Ramadan has posed a lot of problems. It's just hard to pull things together last minute here. Uh, out of all of the malls that Dubai has, there's this one with an interesting theme, and that is the Batuta Mall. Strolling through the corridors of consumption, I shop while learning about the scientific achievements of the Islamic world.
The mall is inspired by the travels of Ibn Battuta, a famous 14th century Arabic explorer. I could make a fun column out of this, but I couldn't turn it into a feature story. Writing about a mall really isn't my thing, but in Dubai, malls make a story. While it's not the story I set out to do, it'll have to work for now. That's the life of a columnist. Deadlines loom, story ideas change and evolve, sometimes organically, sometimes out of necessity. We couldn't leave Dubai without experiencing firsthand the magnitude of its most publicized engineering marvel, the Palm. Seeing the model just doesn't convey the scale of this project. You've got to experience the real thing. More. I need more. Give me more. It's crazy to me to think that right now we're walking on what was once just ocean. At the Palm Jumeirah, the first and smallest of the Palm Islands, 60,000 people will find a new home on reclaimed land. So I guess this is what most of the villas look like. So we read so much about the boom town in Dubai, but I don't think people in North America can actually grasp the scale of it here. Like, they're really doing this. The opulence of Dubai has miraculously risen from the desert sand. Now it's rising up from the ocean depths. Though developers have managed to build the world's biggest skyscrapers, they failed at building a sense of community. Sure, Dubai is booming. But for the traveler who craves culture, the city is a bus. Without a soul, will all that building be enough to make the people want to stay? Let's go, it's too hot. Got body lotion. Back show. <laughs> Can you not do that on my, uh, on my I nice... Do that in your own room. I have your presence. I don't want your presence. <laughs>